sitting here waiting on you to come home again. Mm. Ooh. <laughs> What's up, good people? It's time for another session of that verbal cardio, man. We back. We back in business, shout it. It's been a while, you know, I took two weeks off, but we back in it, man. We back in the thick of it, if you will. Um, I got my co-host Water with me, you know what I'm saying? There is no other podcast that appreciates Water more than this podcast. The amount of time and effort I have put into highlighting Water and the importance of it on this podcast. I challenge any other podcast, I challenge you to find another podcast that's doing more than this. Now, if you if you pull up a random podcast about water and they scientific with it, then then all right, I'll concede. But other than that, come on, man, water. Make sure y'all drinking it. Make sure y'all loving it. Make sure y'all holding it. Make sure y'all are caressing it. You got to stay hydrated, y'all. You got to stay hydrated. Too many of y'all out here dried out on the inside because you ain't drinking enough water. You out here drinking everything under the sun but water, man. You got to make the changes in your life. You got to make the changes in your life. All right? Stop playing with us. Um, I got the IG Live on right now. I got my patron saints up in here. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to Stephanie Matthews, Tony Ant, Armand Sheffy, Stony Face Entertainment, Lace Willoughby, Alice, AJ, uh, Architect, KC, Tony Ant, Sharon McD, QDB, Deo, Rosalind, Gladys Diaz, Candy Cammy, Overdrive Pixie, Chase Ali, Sid, aka Art Simpson, Cat James, Sapphire Blaze, Two Jelsey, Latoya Larkin, Jasmine LaShawn, Styler, Train, AJ, you know what I'm saying? Nana P. Randomly CJ, King Panda. You know what I'm talking about? You feel me? All up in here, man. Getting the good shout outs. I got a mirror on the ones and twos. DJ's travels. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm talking about? You feel me? Cutie B. King Julius D. Nakia. Come on, man. Come on. It get no better than this, man. We back. We in the building. Jason Anderson, what's up? Um, we are back, y'all. Verbal cardio has returned. Allison, <laughs> Allison, Allen Iverson statue. A lot of people was talking about Allen Iverson statue. All right. First, first, the first thing I noticed about Allen Iverson statue. First of all, first of all, I think Allen Iverson is one of the most important players to ever play the game. I feel like he shifted the culture in the NBA. Um, there are not many that can say they shifted the culture more than Allen Iverson. What he brought to the game, what he brought to the look of the game, the feel of the game, the vibe. Not not many can compare. What he was able to do with minimal help, amazing. His height, the crossover, the whole swag, the look, the tattoos, the hair, the attitude. It was like he brought hip hop to the court like no other. Shifted the whole culture. Now, a statue, right? Once you make a statue, not everybody's going to be happy with the statues. Everybody's going to have their little shit to say. Everybody's going to have their two and three cent and four cent. And the Allen Iverson statue was small. That was first and foremost. I think everybody was expecting like the Jordan statue or whatever, like, you know what I'm saying? But the, the statue was small. It was little. Now, I know Allen Iverson is not tall. All right? I know this. But you, you can make that statue larger than life, man. And then another thing, when I first looked at the statue, you know they got his braided hair. He looked like a leatherhead football player from back in the day. Like, remember back in the day when they was playing leatherhead football? I thought he had on a leatherhead hat. I was just like, wait, they got him in the leatherhead hat? Oh, oh, that was his, 
That was the the way it just looked with the headband and the and the braids. It made it look like a leatherhead hat, and I was just like, "What the hell is going on? What what he got on his head?" I was confused, and you shouldn't be confused when a statue is unveiled. There should be no confusion on what you're looking at. It should be like, "Oh, oh yeah, yeah." We supposed to be in awe. We supposed to be like, "This is it, this." But I was just like, wait, why he got on a football hat from back in the day? Why he got on a leatherhead hat? That's the wrong sport. That's the wrong time period and the wrong sport. I was just confused. But it was mad small, man. Anyway, I love Allen Iverson. I'm always rooting for Allen Iverson. I hope, Lord willing, he's still going to be here to reap, reap that 30-something million he got tucked away for, from, from Reebok. I can't wait that he till he can, you know, reap the cash, reap the benefit of what he's earned. I'm glad they had it saved and tucked away. So he's got money coming to him. Just hang on in there. Hang on in there. Ooh. Just hang on in there, Allen Iverson. Stay alive so you can get that money. Because people be dying, man. Rest in peace to Rico Wade from Organized Noise. I'm not sure what the cause of death was, but Organized Noise to me is it's a big part of just like my life and like listening to music and hip hop organized noise has done some amazing things sonically uh that whole sound the whole dungeon family man it was like one once once i heard outcast southern playlist the album had me in a complete chokehold i was in a chokehold i was just like i didn't expect to love Outkast as much as I did. I didn't expect it. It just caught me off guard. I love it when I can just get caught off guard by artists where it's just like, man, I can't, I can't stop listening to this album. When Southern Playalistic Cadillac music hit the streets, I was just like, yo, man, this album got me, man, from crumbling nerve to get up and get out and get something to Southern Playalistic Cadillac music to play his ball. You know what I'm saying? I was just like, yo, this album is fire. Hootie who the way the way big boy rapping on Hootie Who and the production and the sound of it, it just sounded like nothing I had heard before. And I feel like I feel like this. I feel like Southern Playalistic Cadillac music don't get enough credit. I feel like people be like, nah, I'll stink on you, man. Nah, man. Southern Playalistic Cadillac music. You know, I go back and forth on what's my favorite Outkast album. It's either Quimini or Southern Playalistic. And then AT Aliens is up in that holy trinity. Trinity for me. For me personally. I would rank Stank On You fourth. Me personally. Me personally. Now, I know a lot of people rock with Stank On You. It is a good album. But man, those first three, the first three Outkast albums are my, are my favorite three. That's... That's my holy trinity of the Outcast albums. Southern Playlist, AT Aliens, and Equimini. Those three, prime real estate. Prime real estate. I'll be skipping on Stank On You. I'll be skipping. There's some skips. I'll be like, all right, man, no, I'm going to just go ahead and skip. Skip a few of these. I didn't skip that much on the first three. You know what I mean? But that's just me. That's just me. I know when I do polls and stuff, y'all be having stank on you up there. But I'll be like, nah, man, not for your boy. You know what I noticed, though, about hip hop? If it's too musically thick, it kind of loses me a little bit. It kind of loses me a little bit. Like when it's, when it's a little, when it's a tad too much going on, in the production, I kind of, I kind of get, I kind of get lost in the thickness of the of the production, and I, I kind of did that with Stank On You. I did that with uh, Voodoo, D'Angelo's Voodoo. It, it was, it was too thick. I respect, I respect the musicianship. Don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong, please. Don't get me wrong. I respect the musicianship, but if it's too much going on. I just be like, all right, this is a little too busy for me. I'm gonna just go ahead and fade on out. 
And I, you know, I, I found myself kind of doing that with Stank on you. I, I would, I would pick my hits. You know, say I would go in there and get my Miss Jackson. I would go in there and get my Red Velvet. I would go in there and get um, uh, Humble in the Jungle. You know, I would go in there and get my little tracks. But then overall, though, overall, I just never let Stank on you just play out willy nilly like them first three albums. And then D'Angelo, D'Angelo's voodoo is like, yeah, man, voodoo is that one. But I'd be like, oh, but Brown Sugar was more, Brown Sugar was more accessible for me. It was just more, it, it was an easy playthrough for me on the Brown Sugar tip. Even even Kendrick Lamar's To Pimp a Butterfly, same thing. To Pimp a Butterfly is a dope album. But I found myself challenged by it. And I know a lot of people are gonna be like, see, your, your musical taste, your musical palette is basic. If you can't, if you can't marvel at what, what the Pimp of Butterfly is doing. My on, my honest intake of my honest intake of to Pimp a Butterfly, it was a lot going on in the production. And so I would find myself skipping. I was skipping around. I was just like, yeah, you know what I'm saying? And so I didn't rotate to Pimp a Butterfly like I did Good Kid, Mad City. I would I was doing more skips. And so maybe maybe I'm just not, you know, maybe maybe my palette is is simple and basic. I don't know. I don't know. On the production side, lyricism I can handle, but but the Pimp a Butterfly to me, even though it's highly respected, critical acclaim. I just I just don't revisit that album like I do Good Kid, Mad City. I come back to Damn more than I do to Pimp a Butterfly. And although I respect to Pimp a Butterfly for what what they was able to cook up, I just feel like it didn't have any real longevity for me on the airplay as a whole. And I love it when I can just play a whole album. I love when I can play a whole album. That means a lot to me. But you know, there's certain albums that, even though they got the critical acclaim and the and the success, I, I just be like, ah, I'm skipping around too much. So to pimp a butterfly was that for me. Uh, like when I go for track for track, I was like, man, I see, I'm skipping the intro. I'm skipping this. I'm skip-. matter of fact, to pimp a butterfly, I don't really let it start rocking until like track four or five. The first three is is skips for me. I don't know. Anyway. Anyway, rest in peace to Rico Wade. Rest in peace to Mr. C. I don't know how these men are dying. Like, they're not giving the cause of death. I be wanting to know how people died, y'all. I'm not even going to lie to you. I want to know how people died. You know what I'm saying? Like, I want to know the cause of death. What happened? When you in your 50s, man, what happened? What, why, why they not here, man? Why they gone? Why who who's respond? What's responsible for this? People just be passing away. Just be like, yeah, they dead, y'all. The cause of death is undisclosed. Enjoy your day. Like how, man? How they dying? When I die, man, find out how and ask how. And I want it released. I want it released, y'all. When I pass away, I want everybody knowing what happened. So if you're close to me and you got to handle my affairs after I die, tell, tell people what happened. Don't just be having Tony Baker out here. Tony Baker passed away, yo. How? Anyway, we're going to remember him for the funny guy he was. But how'd he die? Tony Baker was always bald. Yeah, but how'd he die, though? He was a funny man, a caring man. He was a father. Yeah, he was a father. He was all that. But how he die? Tony Baker always smelled good. He always took pride in his smells, and he loved the butters and to stay moisturized. He was moisturized, but how he died, oh, Tony Baker was a caring man. He had friends, family. He was a good time. But how he died, oh, Tony Baker hated phone calls. He hated talking on the phone. People be like, let's hop on a call. But hop on a call about how he died, though. Now, I don't want that. I want my death known. Be like, yo, Tony Baker, man, he was gunned down at the donut shop. Seven bullets, the one that hit his heart, that's the one that did it. I want that detail in it. 
Even if it, even if it's something I got to be ashamed of, put it out there anyway. Tony Baker was found face down at a brothel. He OD'd on cocaine and heroin. It was a speedball. Put it out there. Put it out there, high pack. Keep it real. Keep it real. I don't like misconceptions in my living life. I don't want no misconceptions when I pass. I'm transparent. I'm honest. If I was doing some fucked up shit and I died in the midst of it, well, guess what? That's what it is. I ain't know Tony was in there. Well, you found out. I'm gone anyway. I'm gone anyway. I'm out of here. But your legacy, man, fuck my legacy. I want my legacy to be honesty and transparency. That's my legacy. He didn't check the shower curtain. The shower curtain killer got him. He died face down, booty up in his bathroom. Put that in there. Put that out to the masses. He died face down, booty up, y'all. What I got to lose? I'm already gone. I'm already out of here. Listen, speaking of out of here, you people in the IG Live, you're out of here. I'm about to cut off the feed. If you want to see the rest of this episode live as I record it right here, as I live and breathe, join my Patreon right now. Join my Patreon right now. Click the link in my bio. Click that Patreon tab. Join the paid membership. Join the paid membership. Don't be out here on the free. You're not going to get the benefits. You're not going to get the benefits. All, all those streaming platforms that you pay membership to, they're not personal with you. They're not shouting you out. They're not calling your name personally. They're not crying with you. They're not opening up to you. They're not asking how your day was. They're not asking you how, what you had for dinner. They're not asking you how the family's doing since you lost your aunt or your nephew or your uncle or your parents. They're not checking in on you. Netflix ain't never checked in on you. They check in to see if you awake. You still watching? That's, that's about as much checking in on you as they going to do. Amazon Prime, HBO Max. Hulu, they not checking for you. They not checking. Me, I'm checking for you. I'm talking to you. I'm shouting out your name. I'm saying your name. I'm asking what you have for them. I'm invested. I'm concerned. I'm all in. I want to know your favorite album. I want to know your favorite 80s movie. That's what you get with my Patreon. You know what I'm saying? That's what you getting with me. So join it. Get in on this. Get in on this. Click the link in my bio. Click that Patreon tab. Join up, man. Join up right here, right now. I'm about to cut off the feed. Boom. Pow. All right. All right. All right. Let me do. Let me do this real quick. Hold on. Let me do something real quick, y'all. Hold tight. So. I haven't done a verbal cardio since the, the real thick of the rap beef has been going on. A lot's happened since I did the last verbal cardio. And I just want to say that I, I'm, I'm really, I really don't like the fact that J. Cole apologized to Kendrick. I don't like it. I get why he did it. And I don't think it's fear. I think he, I, I think he just really loves and respects Kendrick. That that's what's at the pit of my soul. That's that's what I feel a hundred percent. I feel like he just felt the pressure to clap back, but his heart there, he doesn't have any real animosity though towards Kendrick. So I feel like you know J Cole. J Cole has always struck me as like an emotionally intelligent person. So I just feel like he just didn't want to do it. And I, I don't know. I know y'all going to bring up, well, he be talking that shit about he the best, he the best, he the best. You know what I'm saying? If you're going to be the best, you got to be ready for whoever roll up. You talking about you the best this, the best that. This is what rap, This is what rappers do. That's what they talk about. I'm the best. I'm the richest. I'm the flyest. I got the most girls. I'm doing this. I'm doing that. Even if they not, even if they clearly lying, they still say this. They still say this even, even with a loss. 
A lot of people feel like Jay-Z lost the battle of Nas. Did that stop Jay-Z from talking shit in the future? No. Absolutely not. You can take a L and still be like, yo, I'm cutting, I'm cutting heads off lyrically. So, you know, for people to be like, well, he can't just be saying he the best. No, is J. Cole still not killing features? Did he not have a tremendous feature run for years now? For years? There, I have never heard a weak subpar J. Cole feature. I can't even think of one. And here lately, he's just been on an amazing tear of just like ripping through these features. You put him on the track with somebody, he going to shine. And so, you know, when you when you out here shining, even 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 on the same song with Drake, he killing his feature. Drake ain't, Drake ain't out shining. You know what I mean? So it's like don't let that diminish J Cole's skills. And I feel like the project itself might delete later. He he did take it all. He took it off the whole project. It's not there no more. He took seven minute drill off. He took it off. He was just like, all right, I'm taking it off here. But but I feel like seven minute drill is overshadowing how good might delete later is. I've been listening to that heavy, um, especially uh, the song. Six and Stones, Pie, and Stealth Mode, and the opening track with Ari Lennox is fire. So, but here's the thing: here's what's dangerous and stupid and annoying about today's day and age. People don't let nothing go now. They're not gonna let nothing go now. They're not gonna let nothing go. They're gonna run shit into the ground. They're gonna be like, "Yo, but he apologized. He apologized. He apologized. He apologized." Whatever he does, henceforth. He gonna apologize, y'all, but he 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 gonna he just gonna apologize. They ain't gonna let it, they ain't gonna let it die. And so I hate for that. I hate for that to tarnish J. Cole's legacy. I don't want that to be his legacy. You know what I mean? Because he's dope. He's still he's still the big three, regardless of what's going on here. He's still, he's still in the big three. Even that little surprise album debuted at number two on the Billboard charts, coming in behind Beyonce. That lets you know the power of, you know, the power and the popularity of a J. Cole is that, you know, you can you can just dump dump an album on us on the sneak tip and it still debuted that high. And cats out here in the rap game, even with the promotion and the build up and the promo on social media, they still not getting these numbers. So it's like, damn, I just wish he just, I wish he just wouldn't have said nothing. I wish he just would have put seven minute drill out and just let it be what it is. He could have been like, man, I ain't even want to do that, y'all. But anyway, and then go back into his set. And he never, he never technically said, I'm sorry, Kendrick. He was just like, yo, I apologize for what I did. I just, I just wasn't even, I just wasn't even in it fully. And a lot of people be like, well, he said that because, you know, the diss wasn't received well. I don't think it was that. I don't think it was that at all. I just felt like he just wasn't in it. I felt like he just, I felt like it felt forced. There was no real animosity, man. The best the best rap battles, man, it got to be some animosity in there, some some, some defensive some defensive energy, some, some offensive energy. It's got to be like, the vibe got to be right. When you hear when you hear No Vaseline by Ice Cube, there was real animosity attached. Ice Cube left NWA cuz the money wasn't right. He was trying to bring it to Jerry Heller and Easy E's attention, and he's like, "Nah, man, you good. Don't even worry about it." That's going to build animosity. That's going to be, man, they out here kind of ripping us off. They kind of using this, man. I'm trying to get my money right. Something ain't right. So he left the group. Ice Cube was like, "All right, I'm going to do my solo thing." Then they start talking shit about him. And like, yo, he's like, yo, y'all know why I left the group. Y'all know what my reasoning was. And then y'all going to talk shit about me? And he let the first shot slide. Then they dissed him again? All right. All right. So on that retaliation, he had some get back in his heart, some animosity, some like something to get off his chest. So no Vaseline hit harder because 
It was like, yo, man, I got real stakes in this, real feelings, real build up. Not just on some competition shit, but just like, yo, man, y'all know I left NWA because the money wasn't right. How dare y'all attack me? Y'all going to try to jump me? Bet. That's why No Vaseline, one of the hardest diss tracks ever. Arguably, a lot of people got it at number one. They'd be like, hit them up, No Vaseline, Ether. Those are the main three diss tracks that people discuss when they ask, what's the best diss track? It'd be like, hit them up, No Vaseline, Ether. Those are the ones that always come up in conversations. Because it was, it, was re- it was real stakes on that. It was real feelings. It was real animosity. Those be the best beefs. Hit them up, man. Pac... Pac felt a way. Pac felt a way, man. I feel like you was in on me getting shot, dog. It don't get no more personal than that. Y'all was in on me getting shot. Y'all was part of the setup. They tried to take my life. And I feel like y'all was in on it. This gonna be, it's going to be real passion in them bars, man. If I could, fuck a, you know, just bar for bar competition. Nah, man. Y'all was in on this. I'm going to fuck your wife. I did. Whether he did or not, we don't know. But just him saying that planted the seed like, yo, man, he fucked Big's wife. It don't get no more personal than that. Now we got real stakes, real animosity. Like, damn, man. And it's kind of, I kind of feel like maybe he did because Faith never seemed mad enough. Faith never seemed mad enough for me. You know what I mean? And you know, Biggie, Biggie was cheating on Faith. Biggie was out here cheating. We know that it's been documented. Faith has said herself she didn't have to roll up in the hotel room and put hands, hands to face. So it's like, even if she didn't let Tupac smash, just the thought of it, just the inkling of it, Faith could have been like, you know what? We never did nothing, but I'm going to let this ride. Just because of how Biggie hurt me, I'm going to let this shit ride. I'm going to let it cook in your brain that it could have could have happened just to fuck with you. Because let me tell you something. When somebody lie on you about sex, when somebody lie on your name, you be you be aggressively fighting against it. At least I would. If somebody was like, yeah, man, Tony smash. I'm like, no, I didn't. I'm going on every platform. Any chance I get, I did not smash that girl. And y'all sitting up here believing the hell no, I ain't smash. I'm bringing up receipts. I'm giving y'all the backstory. I'm coming in interview first. I don't care what I'm doing. I don't care if I'm talking. I'm there to promote a movie, a comedy album, whatever I'm working on. I'm going to come in and be like, yo, I didn't fuck that girl. How y'all doing? Today's show, how you doing? Yeah, we got the new movie coming out, Pixar. It's for the whole family. I ain't fuck that girl, y'all. Gail, Gail King. You know what I'm saying? Today's show host. The View, goddamn it, Whoopi. I didn't fuck that girl. We're not even talking about that. Hey, y'all ain't talking about it, but they saying it in the comment section. I didn't fuck that girl. Y'all hear me? I'll be on 2020, 60 Minutes, No Jumper, The Breakfast Club, all them shits. The Joe Budden Podcast. I'll be on Joe Rogan. Hey, Joe Rogan, I ain't fuck that girl. All right, man, let's talk about aliens and, and weed. and Man, fuck all that. I ain't fuck that girl. I'm tired of people saying it. I'm tired of people believing it. All right, Tony, we off that. Now, I'm, y'all off it, but you're not off it. And they trying to they trying to lie on me. They're trying to satellize my name. And I'm not having it. All right, Tony, chill out. No, man, fuck that, man. I never did. I never did. All right, so, Tony, uh, you like skydiving? You know I never did it. And you know what else I never did? I never did that girl. Never smashed. She out here lying on me, putting me in a song that's going to live eternally. And you got me out here thinking I didn't smash. I ain't smash. All right, Tone. All right. Anyway, the new movie I got coming out is called uh, I Didn't Fuck That Girl on Pixar for the whole family. I ain't fuck that girl. Rated G. General audiences. Bring the whole family out. I ain't fuck that girl. 
God damn it. That's how I'm taking it. Let me do this ad real quick and then I'm going to come back to what I was talking about. Let me do this ad real quick. Let me pay the bills. Let me pay the bills and tell y'all about a little something, man. Let me fill y'all in. Now, life doesn't happen bi-weekly, y'all. Life does not happen bi-weekly. All right? So why should pay day? If life doesn't happen bi-weekly, if life ain't sitting here waiting for you to get paid, life ain't waiting for you to get paid. Life ain't going to be like, oh, you, you ain't get paid yet? All right, I'm going to wait. I'm going to hold off. I'm going to hold off on this car. Trouble you about to get. I'm going to wait till you get paid. Or that medical emergency. Oh, I was about I was about to mess with your heartbeat rhythm. But I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait. I ain't, I know you waiting on payday, so I'm going to get you when life doesn't happen bi-weekly, so why should payday? The money you earn can be in your hands today with earning. Earning is an app that gives you access to your pay as you work, up to $100 per day or up to $750 per pay period, right? All you got to do is download the earning app and verify your paycheck, then access up to $100 a day as you work and leave an optional tip. Any money you access plus tips are automatically repaid from your next paycheck. You feel me? Because, man, listen, man, stuff comes up. Stuff comes up, car trouble, pay, you know, payments. Uh, you got a problem at the house. You had to have a locksmith come out because you lock yourself out. You know what I'm saying? Pet issues. Whatever comes up in the moment, man. Your hat, your, your hat, your cat done had a stroke. You got to take it to the vet. And then vet prices ain't cheap. You know what I'm saying? All kind of stuff can go wrong. You need that money now. You, your payday two weeks from now. You ain't got time. Or you owe somebody money. You owe, you was in the streets. And now, now iceberg slimmed and rolled. I'm like, where my money at, man? Oh, I know I don't get paid for another two weeks. I want that money right now. Earning, that's where it comes in. Make earning a part of your financial routine and join earnings over three and a half million customers and say things like, when I think about earning, I think about financial stability, security. It gives me a lot of peace of mind. Let me tell you something. Peace of mind is golden right now. Peace of mind? That's what my life is all about now. Peace of mind. I want the peace of mind. I remember growing up, I never knew what peace of mind meant. I thought peace of mind meant I'm going to give you a peace of my mind like you're just telling somebody else. But the peace of mind to where your mind can relax. Because my mind don't be relaxed. I'll be like, man... I'm stressing about this, this, that, and the third. But that peace of mind earning can give you, oh, it's priceless. So download Earning the Day, spell E-A-R-N-I-N, in the Google Play or Apple App Store. When you download the Earning app, type in Verbal Cardio under Podcast when you sign up. It'll really help the show. Type in Verbal Cardio under Podcast. Subject to available earnings, location, daily max, and pay period max, see earning.com slash TOS for details. Earning is a financial technology company, not a bank. I repeat, let me say that again. Earning is a financial technology company, not a bank. Bank products are issued by Evolve Bank and Trust, member FDIC. All right, so get in on that earning, man. And when you get in on that earning, put that verbal cardio in there on the podcast, man, to let them know I sent you. You know what I'm talking about? You feel me? Now, back to the rap beefs. Animosity, real beef on the back end where you can feel it. You know what made Ether so dope? Jay-Z shot it at Nas. And he was like, oh, that's about Nas. That's about Nas. Nas has never been an MC. You never considered Nas a battle type MC. Everybody going to have their subliminals, but there are certain cats that are more aggressive on how they rap. You, you, you feel like, oh, yeah, they ready for battle. They ready for war. Nas was never really that guy. Nas was like, the spirit of Rakim. It was like, yo, he can tell stories. He's just putting putting together visuals. That's Nas's, that's Nas's bread and butter. Putting together visuals that you can see. He's cinematic. He's gonna paint a picture. Even if it's not a storytelling rap, the way he raps, you really visualize what he's talking about, right? It's it's not just all just brags and boasts. It's it's a complete picture. The details he puts in there. So nobody ever had Nas as like, yo, I'm scared to battle Nas. So, wait, what you saying, Shannon? Why are there only 
17 likes. Oh, y'all not liking in here? Y'all better like in this live. Y'all better hit that like button. If you in this live right now, hit that like button. Um, that'll, that'll help the show. So when so with the takeover, the takeover was rough. The takeover was a shot. He was like, oh snap. He told my Nas. Nobody expected Nas to come back with Ether the way he came at him. Nobody expected Nas to come back like that. Nobody saw that coming. Not even me. Not even me. Nas is my favorite rapper, but I did not think he was going to go at Jay-Z that hard. I was just like, well, damn. And for me, a part of a good rap battle is just the venom the roasting, the, the the stuff you can't forget, the stuff you can't shake. And it was like, yo, so so Ether just came out and caught everybody off guard. Zay Nova saying Ether is overrated as hell. How so? Zay Nova, back up your claim. Give me, give me the reason why Ether is overrated. He gonna come with some, it wasn't all facts in there. He was just, he was just talking shit. That's a good rap battle. Everything don't have to be true. Everything don't have to be accurate in a rap battle. You know what I'm saying? Everything don't have to be you is facts. Jay-Z didn't have all facts in the takeover. Because people be like, yo, the takeover was all facts. No, it wasn't. Remember when Jay-Z straight lied and said he was paying. MC Search to use the sample for Dead President uh, on the Dead President song that sampled Nas. He was like, I'm just paying Searchlight Publishing. No, he was paying Nas, but he's not going to put that in the track. So you can't say, oh, man, Jay-Z was all facts. No, he wasn't. No, he wasn't. So I want to know, say Nova, how Ether is overrated as hell he was just saying shit like big lips jay-z got big ass lips in the mc battle face to face i'm gonna roast your big ass lips you know what i'm talking about i'm gonna roast i'm gonna roast your appearance a big part of mc battling is roasting that's a component in the mc battle a big component of MC battle is roasting the other person. So in a battle, I'm going to talk about what you got on, what you wearing, what you, what you look like, what you done did. Why you, you know what I'm saying? We going to roast. We going to roast the obvious. So per, per the definition of battle, roasting somebody's face is par for the course. Y'all don't be going back to Ether. I listen to Ether several times a year. Matter of fact, matter of fact, whenever there's a battle going on, I go back to battle raps I fuck with. With this, with this whole J. Cole, Kendrick, Drake stuff, I go back to Ether. I be like, see, this, now this is how it should be done. I go back to Ether all the time. This battle, this battle right here made me go back to Infrared by Pusha T and the story of Adonai by Pusha T. It makes me go back to No Vaseline. It makes me go back to The Bitch and You by Common. It made me go back to, to Checkmate by Jadakiss when he went at 50. Nas told Jay-Z he had dick-sucking lips. I mean... You know what I'm saying? He looked like a camel. He was just roasting him. That's that's part of the MC battle. How many how many how many of Biggie's rhymes is going to come out your fat lips? Which is a valid question while still roasting the lips. How many biggie rhymes you gonna say, dog? That's valid because Jay Z is known for putting biggie rhymes in his rhymes. That's fact. 
So just just say just say you don't like Nas, man. Just say you don't like Nas and keep it moving. But don't say that level of battle rap song is overrated. Because there's a, there's a reason why people still say you got ethered. There's a reason for that. If it was truly overrated, Ether would have just faded into the background of, and nobody would ever talk about that song. But it's still mentioned to this day. To this day, it's still, still mentioned. Why is that? Jay-Z was the more popular artist at the time. Why is that? Why wasn't, why wasn't Jay-Z overrated in this? You know what I'm talking about? You feel me? You know what I'm talking about? You feel me? And I listen, I come back to Steelmatic often and Ether gets played. Now, I will say this, though. I will say this about Ether. I'm not crazy about the beat. I'm not crazy about the beat on Ether. The, the beat is whatever. The beat is... The beat is whatever. But that's... That's what proves that ether was fire because the beat is subpar yet and still we still hold that battle rap in high regard even with a mediocre ass beat that means the lyrics was hidden because some battle raps get by on the on the on the production but when you got when the production is whatever You just like, man, I'm really listening to these lyrics. Like Nas was spitting so much venom in there, you just like, man, it could be any beat in the background. We in. We was nobody saw this coming. Nobody saw it coming. Play some sound bites of the battle. Eminem murdered you on your own shit. That's facts. He said Eminem murdered you on your own shit. Remember Renegade? Remember Renegade? Remember Renegade? Eminem's, Eminem's verse on Renegade was just like, damn. Shit. Verbal Cardio is back. Um, but I, I'm, I'm mad that J. Cole bowed out because I know people won't let it go. But as for me, I haven't lost, I haven't lost any love for J. Cole's music. I'm still a fan. I still think his raps are just like, just listen to how he's rapping on Mike Delete later. Just listen to it. He rapping, rapping. And Ab Soul and Daylight was doing their thing on Pie, man. Ab Soul, Ab Soul's features are undefeated. Undefeated. Big undefeated. Um, what else we got up in here? Is there anything else? Oh, they got they got the this or that's going. Tanisha Turner asks this. Besides NBA players, who do you think deserves a sneaker deal? I.e. Harriet Tubman would have my vote. I think Tanisha, I think that's genius for one. I think if anybody needs a sneaker, it's Harriet Tubman. Harriet Tubman 100% needs a sneaker deal because Harriet Tubman was leading slaves to freedom. We on foot, shouted. We on foot. Who better than to have a running shoe than Harriet Tubman? We should have been had the Harriet 7s, the Tubman 8s. We should have been had the Harriet Tubman. Because that was all about running. It don't get no more historical on the running tip than Harriet Tubman and the Underground Railroad. We on the run. We on the run. 
That's the ultimate running shoe. All this running for marathons and just as a recreational sport, man, fuck that. We running for freedom. Why, why, why has there not been a Harriet Tubman shoe by now? A running shoe. Nike should have been like, yo, we need a Harriet Tubman running shoe. That should have been the first running shoe to ever exist. These athletes just doing it because they can, they want to. They can. People people jogging and running because they want to. Harriet Tubman and them had to. They had to run to this freedom, man. Every step mattered. Every mile. We need the Harriet Fives. The Tubman Three. The Underground Railroad Sevens. They should have been here. Harriet Tubman is the ultimate running shoe. That's it. I don't even want to talk about nobody else because nobody else even matters. Harriet Tubman is the one that should have a running shoe. Hands down, 100%. Harriet Tubman. Tanisha Turner. That's a fantastic choice. And that's the only choice, as far as I'm concerned. Harriet Tubman is past due. Past due for that shoe. Past due for that shoe. Bars, man. Y'all don't want to see me in an MC battle. Past due for that shoe. Y'all don't want to see me in a rap battle, man. I'm destroying people in a rap battle. Don't bring it here. Now, the Martin Luther, Martin Luther Kings, man. The Martin Luther Kings. They was walking a lot. So you can get like you can get like a nice little subtle walking shoe, maybe some sketches or whatever, but they they really wasn't they I mean they had to run when they was, you know, bringing the hoses out and the German shepherds, but overall they was like marching, they was on foot. So you can get like a nice little walking shoe, you know, loafer, maybe a soft excuse me, maybe a soft bottom. Like they look like hard bottoms, but they got the soft on it. Soft, soft, hard bottoms. That's that's for the that's for the you know the Martin Luther Kings. You know what I mean? Because you know you still gotta look presentable because they was marching in suits and you know dresses and stuff like that. So you gotta come with you gotta come with that aesthetic. But at the same time, we walking we walking we walking long distances, so it's gotta be soft. At the same time. So sure, get the MLKs, but they they not a, they not a straight up sneaker. They look like dress shoes, but they got the soft bottom. Let's go with that. Bilal asks, "Is J Cole a punk for following his heart?" I don't think he's a punk. He just made his decision. Cause I don't think it was fear. You a punk if you scared? I don't think he was scared. You know what I'm saying? I just don't think that. Um, I'm going to discuss X-Men 97, episode five, in my recap. I'm going to just do a separate recap video for that. Um, Annette Rogers says, Tony, since you say we don't do a good job flirting, what are some lines slash moves that would work on you, especially like at the gym? Um... I'm a fan. I'm a fan of like. Uh, I'm a fan of a woman letting her presence be known. What it is you want. Early on, because for me, like, I don't like. I don't like to make incorrect assumptions. I don't want to be that guy. I don't want to make incorrect assumptions. I don't want to misread energy. So if you come in and be like, all right, handsome. Calling me handsome, that's a step in the right direction. I'm like, oh, well, thank you. So at least already, already I know that you find me attractive in some way. So calling me handsome is like, oh, okay, all right. So at least I know I'm visually appealing to you off the top. So that's already that's already a foot in the door. That's already like, oh, you think I'm handsome? All right. Well, shit. <laughs> okay. 
Yeah. So I already know that little that little piece is at least established. So I'm like, damn, I didn't know she found me handsome like that. That still don't mean that that don't mean everything. That don't mean you want to take me down. That don't mean you want to date me. You could just be like, yo, you handsome, but you not you not for me, but you handsome. So it's a nice little, you know, all right, okay. So that that'll get you somewhere. Cause now now you got my wheels turning. Now you got my wheels turning. I'm just like, oh, okay, all right. Bet that. Bet that. So at the gym, it could be the same thing. You know, hey, handsome. Oh, oh, oh. Cause in the gym, I'm gonna be in there raggedy, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, oh, okay. All right. So you really can't lose with that. You ain't got to be, you ain't got to come up with no corny ass lines. Ain't no line. Hey, handsome. Hey, handsome is a simple but effective line. It's a simple but effective line because now you got the wheels turning. And if there's mutual attraction, a man is not just going to let that hey, handsome fly. He going to be like, oh, shit. All right. He going to come with some follow up on the hey, handsome. You call a man handsome. He going to come with some follow up. See, now we cooking. You just drop, you just drop one little line. Bow. And now he like, oh shit, that's all it takes. You can't go wrong with it. What man's gonna be like, man, she called me handsome. I don't know about this. It's a simple and effective line. So you can't go wrong. That's the main, that's the main one you need. Hey, handsome. Boom. You can say that in the gym. You can say it in the in the DMs. You can say it over text. You can say it in person. Wherever, man. You can't lose. Can't lose with that line, ladies. But y'all, y'all won't even say that. Y'all won't even say that. Y'all just be talking about random shit. And we just be supposed to pick up on that. Y'all just be saying random stuff. And we supposed to just miraculously. I'm going to wait for him to make the, the move. He the man. I'm going to wait for him to make his presence felt. The man should lead. That's that's how I came. The man should lead. Why? Why I got to say he handsome? What if, what if, what if he, he don't think I'm handsome as well? I didn't put myself out there. You ain't put yourself out there by calling a man handsome. You there's nothing to lose. Cause I, I know I know people are scared to put themselves out there and be vulnerable. But the hey a quick hey handsome, you got nothing to lose. You got nothing to lose. You you can still throw something out there, but at the same time, you didn't put too much out there. You can save face in that. No matter what. If he don't find you mutually attractive, you still save face. You still save face. You lose nothing. So it's a nice little bam. Hey, handsome. Oh. <laughs> How you doing? You know what I'm saying? Simple. We ain't got to overthink this. We ain't got to overthink this, y'all. Hey, good looking. Hey, handsome. Boom. Pow. Bam. Wheels turning. That's it. That's all you got to do. Nana P asks, do you have any superstitions before a show or something you absolutely have to do? Or have before leaving the house that someone may find weird. I don't really have like uh, before before I perform, I would pray. I pray a lot before a show, like please God work through me and let me deliver. Um, I say that to myself. Um, the superstition that I'll be following the most is splitting the pole. Splitting the pole is that's my main superstition where I, I'll be on it. Like when we walking together and you split the pole, I'll be like, nah, man, wrap around. Or I got to come around. Like whoever, whoever was in the front, whoever's leading in the front, you can't split the pole. I'll be on that one. That's my main superstition that I, I can't shake. So I'll be like, yo, man, you split the pole, dog. That's the one I can't shake. 
Like, you know, walking under ladders, like how often do I even see ladders? You know, so I live with a black cat, so yeah, I can't really I can't really prescribe to the, the black cat crossing your path because, you know, I live with a black cat. He crossed my path all the time. Every morning, then when I come out the bedroom, he walks past. And I just be like, damn, man, let me let me get down the stairs before you cross my path. So um I can't really rock with that superstition. Uh, but I remember, I remember back when we was young, we was like, yo, every time you cuss, you got to say, forgive me, God, for cussing. And I used to do that. Like, when we would cuss, I'd be like, yo, forgive me, God, for cussing. And then I would just, you know, it would be after the fact. Like, we was really, we was really praying to God, like, after we cuss, we'd be like, forgive me, God, for cussing. You know what I'm saying? Because cussing was just like, oh, we cussed. Forgive me, God. We used to do that. Um... I've never broken a mirror. But other than that, like, you know, my my main superstition, though, is splitting the pole. I'll be stepping on mad cracks. When I'm walking in the community, I'll be stepping on mad cracks. I'll be stepping on crack vials. You know what I'm saying? I'll be stepping on crack. I'll be stepping on crackers. And then watch out. That's splitting the pole, though. That's the one. That's the absolute one. And I feel, I feel... I feel I feel wrong if I don't say my grace before I eat. I feel incomplete. I feel like God's looking at me like you. Oh, I got you. You ain't gonna say you ain't gonna thank me for that meal? All right. All right, I got you. You gonna pay for this. I don't know why I'm picturing God that petty. But he was like, all right. You sat up here and didn't say thank you for that meal. All right. <laughs> Bet. Bet that. Uh-huh. I'm cooking up some rain clouds right now. Uh-huh. You ain't you you ain't say thank you. Now when you plan that little that, that little cookout you got planned, all right. I'm gonna cook up a nice batch of clouds for your ass. <laughs> you wanna you wanna really sit up here and not thank me for that meal. All right. Mm-hmm. I see you on your little date. Neither one of y'all said grace. <laughs> All right. I got y'all. <laughs> you want to sit up here and eat together on your little date and not thank me for the food? Bet that. This is going to be the most dramatic, toxic relationship both of y'all ever seen. You want to sit up there and not say grace? All right. <laughs> All right. Yeah, bet that. Oh, look at you. You ain't ate all day. This is the first meal you done had today. And you ain't going to say, you ain't going to thank me for it? <laughs> all right. You're going to be homeless next year. Bet that. All right. What if God was really in his all right bag up there? Like, what if God was like, all right. He looking at us. He looking at us do all this shit in life. We fucking up. We doing wrong. We sinning. We grinning. We all this. He just up there like, all right. All right. Bet. Y'all want to sit up here and pray to me when shit hit the fan. But then when shit going good, you want to ignore me, huh? All right. All right. Bet that. Bet that. He writing it down, man. He writing it down. I appreciate the love, Kobe Maguire. Um, King Julius D says, yo, Tony, the Chatsworth deserve a verbal cardio episode where you dress as Travis Santiago and you doing the podcast and character the whole time, speaking on topics and answering questions. You know what, King Julius D? This is actually a fun idea. This is actually a fun idea, man. I'm not I'm not mad at it. I'm not mad at it, man. <laughs> that would be fun. Noted. King Julius D. Noted. A Travis Santiago episode of Verbal Cardio. You know it's gonna be about that water supply. Uh New York Calm says you can only choose one. Listen to any of your favorite artists catalog by only the instrumental version or 
only the vocals with no music. Damn, this is a, uh, this is tough. I think I would go if it's my favorite artist, a la Marvin Gaye, Sade, um, you know Nas. I'm a I'm a go with especially especially for, well really for like my like Sade and Marvin Gaye for example, I would do the instrumentals. Even though I, even though I love their vocals, I would go instrumentals just because the production alone would just put me in a vibe state. I don't know. I don't know if the I don't know if the lyrics would put me in an automatic vibe state, but I think the instrumentals, like if I if I was just to listen to like the Love Deluxe album by Sade with just the instrumentals, they even have like an instrumental track on there and like music from the seventies and stuff like that. Um. The instrumentals was like more vibrant. They would just let the instrumentals rock. And like the 70s, like them Barry White albums, the instrumentals were just like monumental. And just like they would have they would have the music playing and it'd be a while before they come in with the vocals. And you just like, man, this is my shit. And you just rocking out to pure instrumentals. So I agree. Uh Armand. R and B instrumentals, rap lyrics. I agree with that. I like that. With R and B, give me the instrumentals. With um, with the rap joints, give me the lyrics. I like that. I like that answer. Eric Payne. This is on the movie tip. Which movie would you throw away? Indiana Jones, The Last Crusade, Aliens, Terminator 2, Die Hard. Out of these four, I'm throwing away Indiana Jones and The Last Crusade. That's the movie I'm going to throw away. Um, all of them are good. And Indiana Jones, The Last Crusade is my favorite Indiana Jones movie, but this, this was pretty easy for me to decide. I'm going I'm to get rid of The Last Crusade. Yeah. Cause there ain't no way in hell I can get rid of Aliens, Terminator 2, and Die Hard. I just can't do it. That was easy. You set me up with an easy one, Eric Payne. Appreciate you. Ha <laughs> ha. You thought you had me, didn't you? You thought you had me. Right? You thought you had me. You was like, man, I'm gonna stumble with this. No, you didn't. Indiana Jones was easy work, man. You tried it. I see what y'all, y'all be trying to make it hard hitting. I get it. I get it. You want, you want to see me sweating over here. You want my eyeballs jiggling. You want my nose bleeding. All right. <laughs> All right. But that one was easy. Nice try. Nice try. John, basic name. John, are you working on getting more voiceover animation gigs? Yeah, I keep telling my agency to be like, yo, send me these auditions. Send me these auditions. Send me these auditions. I want to I want to be in these animated movies, man. Come on. The people ain't liking the voiceovers for nothing. Get me in on these. Uh Eric Payne also asks, would you rather have Wolverine's healing powers or Batman's detective smarts? I would rather have Wolverine's healing powers. 100%. I'm not the detective. I'm not going to live my life as a detective. I don't really need the skill. Like if I was an actual detective working at a precinct and I, I was a career man, I would want the Batman skills, but I'm just living my life as a comedian and a human being. Give me that healing factor. Give me that healing factor, man. This is another easy one. Give me that healing factor. You know what I'm saying? I, I get cut. I just heal immediately. You know what I'm saying? My body is extra resistant to like, disease and viruses and all that healing factor a hundred percent i'm gonna be out here looking young and vibrant my age is gonna slow down cancer cancer gonna get up in there and be like man we can't do shit in here healing factor all day healing factor all day long shorty absolutely i can get sliced cut up i can get shot up be like man that all you got yes healing factor for sure, give me them healing powers. Done, I can have some surgery done and I'm going to heal up in no time flat. You know what I'm saying? 
Heal me up. My skin going to be smooth. Let's go. Let's go. All right. Uh, one more thing, and then I'm going to get the hell up out of here. We already an hour in. It's good to be back on Verbal Cardio. I don't know if y'all missed it or not. Um, I'm going to do one in here. I'm going to do one live right here, right right here, right now. Like, ask me something right here in this live feed. Let's see what you got. Great episode. Thank you, uh, Candy Cammy. You miss me, Jesse? Jesse, you be with me every night, though. On the streaming, at least. OJ Simpson thoughts. OJ did pass away. Here's the thing about OJ. I, first of all, I didn't know he had cancer. I didn't know. I assumed OJ was in good health because I saw him on It Is What It Is. So I just thought OJ was out here thriving and glistening. It was just like, yo, OJ died. And at least they told us why he passed. It was like, yo, cancer. And I was like, oh, damn. Um. So I didn't know he was ill. I didn't know he was fighting cancer. And then it was just like, damn. So then I get to thinking like, I don't, I never really knew if he did the murder or not. I don't know if he was guilty or not. I don't know. So it's not like, it's not like I'm heartless when he died. It's not like, yeah, the murderer. I don't know. I don't know if he did. So with that being said, it was just like, damn, OJ died, huh? Man. But other than that, you know, I really got nothing left. It's just like, all right, well, shit, OJ gone. I feel like his death was fast. But um, he was just out here being an old man, just just out here. So I don't know. You'll know he did it. Now, if he did do it, it's just like, well, damn, a, a murderer got his, his comeuppance. You know, cancer was like, I'll, I'll get him, y'all. But what if he is innocent? And y'all out here like, we know you did it. What if he really was innocent? So I, I you know, I, I'd rather stay on this neutral ground here. So I don't know. But that's all I, that's all I got. That's all I can say on that. Um, Jay Thomas asked, sweaty daps or long fingernail daps? I would rather deal with a long fingernail dap because the sweaty dap just makes me feel gross. Like I'll be look, I'll be looking at my hand. And I'll just be like, my hand will be pulsating until I can wash it. You know what I'm saying? Long fingernail dap. I'm like, damn man, cut your nails. But as long as you ain't break skin, I can be like, all right. But what if you got a sweaty ass dap and your fingernails was long? The double whammy of whackness. The double whammy of whackness. You got a sweaty, long fingernail dap up? I'll never dap you up again. We fist, we, we a pound from here on out. Fist bump. Here on out. That's all you get from me henceforth. No matter what's going on, I'm going to be like, ha, ha. I'm going to give you the knuckles. Because if you, if you got a sweaty dap and your fingernails is always long, I can't do it. Your hands are disgusting. Your hands are disgusting. Y'all gonna be like, Tony, don't be judgy, man. I mean, sweaty hands and you got them long ass fingernails. It's gonna be dirt and crust and grime and oil in today's day. Imping them fingernails, man. I can't do it. I can't do it with you. It's skin cells in there and just all kind of stuff all up in your long ass cocaine sniffing fingernails, your pimp fingernails. And you got the nerd to be sweaty handed. It's just too it's just too much going on. Them clammy wet hands. Ah. Not a fan. I'm not a fan of the wet. I'm not a fan of the wet hands. So to answer your direct question, I would rather dab somebody up with long fingernails though. Because a, a wet ass dap up is the worst. Just a wet, gooey ass dap up, man. Look out. And I'm I'm at a I'm at a space in my life where I'm gonna tell you. But like, yo, man, I don't dab you up as much because your hands is wet. Your hands is big wet. It's a sweaty, wet dap up, man. And I'm I'm tired of it. 
I like dry. I like a good dry dap. A gooey ass dap up is not. Mm-mm. And so, hey, let's be real. Some women out here with the gooey wets. There's some women out here with the gooey wet. I done come across some women with some gooey ass hands. So let's not act like it's just the men folk out here because, you know, women get hugged. So a lot of times you might not even counter the gooey wet from the women. And pause when I say gooey wet. I ain't talking about sex. I'm talking about hands. But there's some gooey wet women out here on the hand tip. Don't get it twisted. Just because we coming in for the hug, you, you avoided the gooey wet. So now I'm really going to have to hug you because you got the gooey wet. And don't nobody want to shake hands with the gooey wet. So I'm going to be, now nah, I got to turn into that guy. Where my hug at? Because you're not going to give me the handshake with the gooey wet. So now I'm like, where my hug at? And now I look like that guy. Like, why are you always hugging me so much? Because you got the gooey wets. You get the gooey wets. And I don't want to be a part of that. Fellas, you ever you ever do the hand size comparison with a girl? You know, when they do, let me see how big your hands are. You do the hand size comparison and they got the gooey wet. And all you did was this. And now your hand got the gooey wet residue because you did the hand comparison. And they was gooey wet. So now you just like, ugh. Let me wash my hands. And getting getting the hand job from the gooey wets? Oh, man. The hand job from the gooey wet. Well, actually, that's not as bad because it, it kind of gives a little moisture to the proceedings. Because, you know, let's face it. A lot of women are not good at the hand jobs. They come in there dry-handed and rough. At least with the gooey wet, you could get... But that's... That's neither here nor there. That's neither here nor there. Anyway, y'all, I want to thank y'all for pulling up the verbal cardio, man. Uh, it's good to be back. The gooey wet. It's good to be back. Uh, I'm glad. Shout out to the patron saints that are in here. Thank y'all so much for pulling up. I appreciate y'all. Love y'all passionately. Shout out to my new patron saints that signed up on this day. On this day, our daily bread. And don't forget to say your grace because God going to be like, all right. All right, I want to thank my new members today. Keith on, Sydney Rosas, uh, Keelan Jackson, Zane Mon Montego, or Montego, Montego, uh, Jonas Cannon, Chris Hartman, Modesto Gomez Jr., Lonnie Thomas, and Armand Sheffy. That's my cousin right there, Armand. Um, I want to thank y'all for joining my, uh, my Patreon, man. I appreciate y'all. I love it. I hold it. I cherish it. And thank you for tuning in to another session of that verbal cardio.